Ed, so much of coaching is dealing with and handling unique challenges and adversity, and you've had your fair share of that this year. What is preparation like this week going into UNLV, knowing that BYU is not going to go to a bowl game, but still the, the future remains out there, and it's not just about one season? Yeah, uh, that's, that's one of the, I think, the, the strange realities of sports and football is just be, between the lines and in the game and in the preparation, every week, every game is worth playing for. And, and you guys have seen it. If you can play a, a pickup basketball game, and in that moment, it means as much as any game you've ever been in. And, and so I don't think that that's an issue. I can see if you're not within the team, you know, I can see, oh, gosh, have these guys lost motivation? Do they need a, a motivational rally speech? You know, do they need some type of uh, message for going into next year strong? I, I think all that stuff. I mean, our guys are completely focused on just tasting the sweet taste of victory one time this week, and I think the focus has been good. Why do you think that they are that way, Coach? The the players? Yeah. Why? What is it? Because because a lot of teams wouldn't be that way. Why? Why is oh, BYU that way? I, every team I've been around has has been like that. Yeah, and I and I don't know if if that's has anything to do with just the the fortunate guys that have you know, the fortune that I've had to be around guys like that and the leadership that's been on a team but I've never I've never been on a team that didn't fight right till the end of the year I've I've coached I've, uh, I've coached plenty of teams that had poor records unfortunately I've been around that I know what that's like uh, I know the ups and downs of college football and winning and losing but uh, you know I I'm trying to think of some of the the worst teams that I've been on win lose record I think the two worst I've been on won the last game of the year and so it was just, it was you know that those victories were as sweet as any other. I've got to imagine, and you guys, we know that injuries have been an issue all year long, and nobody wants to talk about the injuries in terms of using it as an excuse, but with the most recent injury with Tanner going out and done for the year, I mean, it's just another gut punch. How do you guys keep fighting back from that? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's the same. You know, a, a starving man wants to eat worse than a, somebody who's full, you know. <laughs> we're, we're starving for victory. We're starving to compete. And, um, and and if it's if it's bad luck or misfortune or challenges that that only makes us more motivated. What has been your message to your fellow coaches because you have uh, dealt with the ups and downs of college football and aren't experienced in that in that way? Yeah, well, the, you know, I think it can be really difficult sometimes in the middle of this type of season uh, to really see how much um, how much blame that the coaches should have. And so I've, I've tried to just remind the guys that, look, I, I know we have personnel issues. I know we have uh, issues with, with um, injuries. And I know that there's things that were, there's challenges that are outside of our control. But we will look back on these moments and know that we could have done more and should have done more. So it's really important that we, that we first put the blame on ourselves and just recognize that. And that's, that's true leadership is, um, is, is making sure that we change ourselves first. This week, the, the specific is the open competition at quarterback, and Coach Satake had mentioned that that's the way this week's going to be handled. But in general terms, when you go into a position where you're looking for an open competition, besides obviously trying to figure out who's going to win the spot, what else as a coach are you wanting to find out in that competition? Yeah, I think, I think you're, you're alluding to, you know, what, what we call the intangibles. You know, it's, obviously we want to have guys that can throw – um, accurate passes and get us in the right audibles in those situations and show leadership on the on the field. But we also we also want to make sure that we have a guy who is displaying confidence, that we have a guy who has confidence in what we're doing, and that there's a relationship back and forth that we can count on in the game. Sometimes we just call that trustworthiness, and you have that throughout offense, defense, and special teams. Certain certain players respond in the things that we ask them to do in a way that uh, gives us a higher level of trust that they're going to go out and, and do it. And so I think we're, we're looking for that this week. That's part of every competition, not just quarterbacks. From week zero against Portland State to now week number 11 against UNLV, where has BYU improved the most? That's a, that, yeah, that's a, a difficult question, not because we haven't improved. I, I think the, it's, it's a very natural progression to improve an area. We have improved in every area. Um, the, the problem is our opponents are improving too. I would say that the biggest step that we've taken forward really that stands out to me is especially over the last two weeks, the timing and rhythm of our quick passing game has been on point. It's, it's increased our offensive efficiency, increased the pass game efficiency. It's helped our offensive line to set up on some quick protection and frustrate some defensive linemen. And then I think it's opened up our run game a little bit too. The opponent this week, UNLV, very interesting offense. 
they are fantastic on the ground, putting up big numbers on the ground. And then their quarterback was playing defense, was playing linebacker two weeks ago. What, what has stood out to you about this UNLV offense? Yeah, that, well, that's the first thing right there. He's, he's a really a talented guy. In fact, he, he plays a big role on special teams, or did before he moved to quarterback. He blocked a punt three weeks ago. Huh. Yeah, he's, a, he's an all-around player. I don't know that anybody has filled up an overall stat sheet like he has. You know, he's a the Scotty Pippen of college football, man. He, <laughs> he's doing it all, and he's, he's really impressive. And I think we'll probably see both of their quarterbacks. Uh, their, their starting quarterback at the beginning of the year is now back from injury, played a little bit last week, trying to work his way back into the lineup. Um, they, what I've been impressed with is that they really understand a team philosophy of offense, defense, and special teams. You can see there's a, there's a culture uh, running throughout the team. They're aggressive in the way that they, that they play on defense. They have... Um, they have tendencies, which a lot of coaches are, can be afraid of. Oh, geez, I have, I have tendencies. But, uh, you know, I think as coaches get more comfortable in what they do, they understand that it's okay to have tendencies. You just need to be really good when you declare what you're doing to the other team. And so I can see that, and I can see the improvement. Uh, Tony Sanchez is a we, – we grew up together, same hometown, played Little League together. And, and uh, so we've, we've been friends for a long time. I'm, I'm proud of the job he's done down there. Is there, is there any funny stories you can tell us about uh, Coach Sanchez? Anything that you'd be willing to share? <laughs> you know, the, the thing about um, funny stories with guys who know each other is he has them too, right? <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm not going to open I'm not going to open, that. open that door. Oh, yeah. Nope. That's a wise answer. That is a wise answer. <laughs> is it fair to call you the Scotty Pippen of this BYU coaching staff? Because oh, I think you're asked to do a lot of different that's, things. No, that's too, too much praise, man. <laughs> I got uh, – when I was a player here, we were – my roommate, Shaden Muirbrook, he was a, a big Michael Jordan fan, and I was a Scottie Pippen fan. We, we very nearly came to blows over who was the more important player for the Chicago Bulls. So, no, I, I have too much respect for Scottie Pippen to compare myself to him. <laughs> Great stuff, Ed. Uh, we'll finish up with this. Um, as a coach, how have you grown this season? Oh, yeah, great question. I, I think probably most of my ability to – to answer that intelligently will be well after the season. You know, every every year we take what we call our cut-ups, right? Um, so we'll, we'll organize all of the game video into our calls, offense, defense, and special teams. And then we go through with a critical eye and try to determine where we need to get better, us, the players, the scheme, the way we coach it. And, um, and, and the thing that I've found is it's nearly impossible to do that as critically in the season where we have a natural protective mechanism to try to think, okay, we're, we're coaching this thing pretty good and we're playing pretty good and we just, we're just we having some bad luck, we're on a bad luck string. I, I would love to answer that question in about January or February. Okay, I'm yeah. putting it in my calendar All right. right now. Ask Ed Lamb this question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great stuff. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you, guys.